theoretically would be easier to to uh, to, uh, to uh, treat or to approach the treatment of the familial forms because we have drugs that block the ability of uh, of uh, enzymes to clear a, to cleave a beta from APP. So you have a gamma secretase inhibitors, you have the beta secretase inhibitors. So theoretically, you could fix the disease, you know, just by limiting the ability of APP to be cleaved, all right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not been as easy as it looks because, <clears throat> it sounds, because the, these enzymes, like, you know, the gamma secretase, they also do older things <laughs> uh, that we just know now. And so if you end up, you know, just, you know, shutting down the enzyme, you're gonna make things worse. But now they're, they're, mod they're now modulators of gamma secretase. So enzymes that do not shut the enzyme down completely, but they just reduce perhaps certain aspect of the enzymatic activity. And those, I think, will have maximum advantage, particularly in the familial cases where the overproduction is the main thing. Mm -hmm. Now, in the sporadic cases, you know, there is going to be much more complex. And I don't think that the single approach is going to work. All right? Because if you look at the brain of a person, someone who dies of sporadic Alzheimer's disease, it's got five or six pathologies at the same time. A beta, tau, TTP43, vascular dysfunction, all right? vascular alterations. So you're going to somehow to deal with a bunch of them. Uh, now, the vessels are easy because you, by preventing by healthy lifestyle, by controlling the vascular risk factors, you can do a lot. And because of control of vascular risk factors, the mortality for cardiac attacks and strokes is going down 60 to 80 percent, all right? So we know how to do that. But we're not just doing that for the Alzheimer group, all right? right. Because the idea so far has been, well, is the disease of the brain. But now we have no more, and we should really you know, broaden our horizon and include the vessels also in any treatment paradigm. I think the the... The, your question, you know, uh, raises a very important public health issue. Uh, because if at the research level, I mean, in tertiary referral, like the Mayo Clinic, Wild Cornell, Sinai, Columbia, who have huge dementia programs, all right? This, they, and they, these people who lead these programs are at the top of their, of their field, all right? If, if, if this vascular prevention approach is not done in that context. So as far as I know, vascular health is not part of a dementia clinic, right? How can we hope that we're gonna trickle down to the, to the physician, <clears throat> you know, to the, to the GP general practitioner who's gonna be the first person who's gonna see someone with Alzheimer's disease? So bottom line, we have a lot of work to do. Okay, so for example, I was giving a talk to a group of GP, general practitioners in, uh, um, um, in St. Louis, uh, Missouri. And um, one of the, the my, in my presentation, I, I presented some evidence that if you lose weight, you know, when you're kind of old, but before your mind, you know, starts to show problems, you're more, most likely to have, you should be worried about Alzheimer's. And then after I finished my talk, I, I, I went to, to lunch, you know, in this, you know, common lunch, and a guy came next to me, a doctor came to me, who actually was a, was a, a doctor, was a, 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 a GP, all right? Mm -hmm. With a, just a general practice, and he told me, I love what you said because, you know, I just saw a couple in which the husband complained that the wife was eating like a horse and was losing weight. And then that woman ended up having Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? So we are looking, so we're not empowering the general practitioner with all these things we should be knowing. We should be, you know, letting them know. And it's very simple. I mean, it's not complicated, you know. Obviously, some of my colleagues, you know, tend to be a little bit too archaic or articulate in their excessively detailed in there, but the concepts are very, very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the American Art Association has got something called Life Simple Seven. Mm -hmm. 
that is a guide to how keep your vessels healthy, all right? Stop smoking, treat your diabetes, treat your blood pressure, keep be, you know, engaged uh, physically, exercise and so on. All of those things, you know, there will be no harm in doing those things in the context of a dementia clinic or a memory disorder clinic, all right? Right. And the, the finger study, in fin the, the, the Finnish study which they looked at, they did a variety of, uh, of treatments for, um, for dementia, included some of those things. And, the, and the, you can see that that's, that approach can work, all right? Right. They were able to, and now they're expanding, they're expanding that approach to the entire world. That was done in Finland, but now they're going to have a finger for the whole, the entire world, India, the United States, you know, the China, all the Europe and so on. So that's going to be really where, it's, where the money is going to be. I mean, a multidimensional approach. And anytime you have a new drug coming in, let's add it, all right? But let's not put all our money on, on the pharmaceutical <laughs> approach, you know, which so far hasn't worked. Right. Whereas we know that the prevention is working. 